So good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and well, good afternoon, good evening, and uh, we're here again. So thank you very much for joining. I can already see folks on the stream. Uh, where's my? Um, here we go. Uh, I can see uh, Full Stack Dawn and P Dominic sixty nine and El Jadhav and Robertino, Christian Gunter, Flavio as well, Napit. Welcome. Um, this is great to see you all um, on this quite well, quite snowy uh, Manchester morning. I hope the weather is treating you fine. Um, so today we've got another hour together. And morning, Fred. Uh, we've got another hour together and we're going to follow on from where we left off. Um, which was at the end of last week, we'd installed the uh, the tools that we'd need uh, to build some uh, cloud application programming model uh, services in Node.js, JavaScript, uh, locally. So we've installed, uh, we've got Visual Studio Code, we've got the CDS command line, we've also got the Cloud Foundry a command line uh, tool as well. And um, thank you all so much as well for the feedback you've been sending. Um, if you haven't uh, managed to uh, put, give me some feedback yet, if you get the time, it's only, it only takes a couple of minutes. Um, if you go to the, the main blog post, in fact, where is the blog post? Let's see. Um, if I go here, I'll stick it in the chat as well here. Good morning, Miles. So if you go there, you'll find a link to the feedback as well. If, uh, the feedback has been super useful so far. Um, one of the uh, one of the requests really has been uh, morning Srikanth uh, has been to go a little bit slower um, and uh, just to take take my time a little bit more, which is great feedback, and I hope that uh, suits everyone as well. Um, I'm also looking for feedback directly in the channel. Um, and uh, thanks, Ladjad. Uh, uh, L How do you pronounce that, by the way? Uh, El Jadhav. Um, I'm going to also talk to you with your with your um, Twitter handles. Now, of course, you know there's quite a few of you that I recognise um, from your handles, and of course, some of you you're using your normal names like Napit and Fred and so on and Miles. Um, uh, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try and you know be be Twitch like and you know use the Twitch handles. Um, so yeah, I'd I'd love to see interaction as well uh, on the channel here as we go. Stop me if you have any questions. Morning, Chris. Good morning, and um, you know we'll we'll deal with the, with them as we come. And like I say, um, I hey Diego. Good morning. Um, uh, finishing a long line. Oh, he's got gonna hit the bed now. Thank you very much uh, for popping in before you go to bed. That's amazing. Um, and have a great sleep. I hope your uh, coding session was uh, was successful. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go a little bit slower. Um, I also I've got a question for you all, um, which is we're broadcasting and we're getting together every Friday now uh, for this hour. Um, with the concept of me going a little bit slower, you know, I get to cover a little bit less in the hour. Um, so. Let me know your thoughts here in the channel about um, whether you would enjoy sort of extra streams, maybe you know at a different time per week, maybe not on a regular basis, but on a semi-regular basis. Uh, maybe I'm, I would try one in the evening. I'm not really an evening person. Maybe I try one in the evening um, to, to be able to catch the US contingent as well, but also to go a little bit deeper on some of the topics um, that you know we may find uh, really nice to sort of geek out upon. So some of the topics we covered last week and the week before, some of those are quite low level. Um, so maybe I'm thinking of um, you know moving some of those deep dives into separate sessions. Um, okay, so already um, uh, Napit is that a big yes and Lajadov as well. That's that's a yeah. What's that? Oh, what? What the heck is that? It's a balloon with Y E A on. That's amazing. Okay, so good. That's that's good to know. Um, and uh, brilliant. Oh, draft support. Ah, oh, draft support. Excellent. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get going. And um, 
what we're going to do is we're going to go through let me just switch to my main scene here there we go um, on the fence Fred's on the fence it takes relatively much time to keep it does Fred it does um, I guess uh, we do have the videos on demand um, and you know there's some amazing uh, videos from talking of videos on demand amazing videos from Thomas Young um, if you haven't seen them head over to his uh, channel on YouTube where he's been doing a whole load of uh, really really cool stuff um, and you know I'm I'm trying to keep up with those so I understand completely um, about um, uh, extra stuff um, but I'm, I'm still thinking that there's so much stuff that we can talk about and you can maybe pick and choose as to as to what to uh, what to join so yeah uh, any any other any other folks with thoughts that would be really good as well but um, Friday morning is perfect um, yeah I thought Friday morning is, um, is is also good because then you know we can go into the weekend and you know straight after this I have a beer no not really um, although sometimes I feel like it. Uh, anyway, I've got my coffee and I'm, I'm holding, this is, this is for Jacob and for Simon, I'm holding the mug the right way around. Um, there we go, there it is, uh, this time. So I got it wrong last time. I made the coffee a little bit strong, so that might make me talk a little bit fast, um, even faster than normal. So um, we're gonna actually get on with some uh, cloud application programming model stuff right now. Uh, we've got this tutorial from Andre uh, that we sort of looked at before. And I'm going to scroll down here. And we spent last week looking through and digging into a lot of, a lot of the detail behind um, NPM set, uh, the regist setting the registry and understanding what those registries, registries are. Um, and uh, yes, I will be on the beer soon enough. Thank you, Chris. Um, be you will as well. I mean, I'll toast you. Um, we've installed globally um, the SAP CDS command, like the CDS command uh, and the CDS packages. Um, and so now we're ready to start. We, let's just have a quick look here. CDS. Yep, there, there we go. We've got the CDS um, command line to help us kickstart um, a project. We've also installed the VS Code um, extension. So that's all ready for us to use. And I've been playing around a little bit more with the extension uh, this past week. And um, the combination of the extension with some you know, default VS Code features um, make the writing of CDS uh, really, really comfortable. Uh, there's some features that I found almost by accident that I'll wanna share with you today. Um, okay, so um, we're gonna jump straight through and we're going to use this first command here because what we're going to do is we're going to build this backend service. It's going to is a bookshop service and it's got some entities like books and authors and uh, orders. And we're going to go through and look at uh, how that service is defined and then how we define the data models. Uh, this this tutorial also then takes us into um, using some uh, mocking uh, to provide sort of data on the fly through JavaScript. Hey, Findafon2, hello, hello, hello. Um, and um, uh, thanks for joining. And uh, we're also gonna look at um, the difference between a service definition and a data model definition. And uh, I wanna mention a little bit about the philosophy behind that. Um, and then if we get the chance, we're gonna add some um, custom code. So we're gonna, you know, so one of the, one of the really nice things about um, CAP and, and CDS is that out of the box, it, it will provide for us um, a, a fully working CRUD plus Q implementation. It's not as if it generates a whole load of boilerplate code for us to take and then manage ourselves. It itself will handle all that, and then we can actually hook in uh, and write sort of you know um, uh, extensions um, to do things uh, at, at certain points where we want. So, for example, before before an entity set is read or after, um, after another row data operation is performed and so on. Ah, oh, my goodness me, Mark, welcome. Uh, what a lovely surprise. Um, so, uh, of course, Finn, Fun2, oh yeah, now I get it, now I get it, yes. Uh, I need some more coffee, obviously. Um, so we're gonna look at that as well. And if we get time, um, I've also been playing around with some debugging profiles in VS Code, and we can sort of debug uh, the stuff that we write. So let's get started. Um, again, 
give me a shout with any questions and everything. I may not be able to answer them and so on. And any suggestions for what I should also be doing here and also in future uh, episodes. So um, we're going to do a CDS in it my bookshop. So what does that do? CDS in it. Well, you've, yeah, CDS in it my. Oh, I want to be in the right direction first of all. So let's go to there. Nothing in there. Okay, CDS in it my bookshop. Okay, so um, the, the really interesting thing is that the way that the CDS command line set of tools has been um, created is that there's actually a number of tools, a number of tools that CDS sort of wraps. So the CDS command itself um, wraps a number of other sort of subcommands. Um, and if you, if we, when we had a look at what was installed last week, if we say npm uh, list global um, at a depth of one, um, we can see that when we installed the CDS module, one of the things was SAP uh, generator CDS. It's a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, an outlier there. Why is it why is it generator CDS and not CDS generator? Anyway, maybe there's a reason for that. I don't know. Um, and that actually provides, if we quit that um, npm info. Uh, CD, uh, SAP generator CDS. Let's go to the top of the screen there. Um, uh, oh, generator dash CDS. Um, there we go. So that provides a binary CDS gen, which is being used by CDS when we did the CDS in it. Okay, so it generates this sort of this skeleton project. So let's. What we've done now is generated the project, and it's called my bookshop. It's created. Uh, it's created a, a directory. Let's go into that. And um, let's have a quick look. In fact, let's have the full screen first of all. Let's have a quick look. Um, it's created a readme. And interestingly enough, that readme, um, diff oh, I've missed that uh, chat one second. I need, to, I need to go over to it. There we go. Um, uh, yeah, the, the readme is actually a slightly cut down version of the tutorial that we're gonna go through. So that's actually really useful to have there. Um, in the package.json, we can see that this is the thing that the CDS in it has generated for us. Um, and the dependencies that it's actually installed as well, that's what it was doing, um, are SAP CDS version 3.0.0. Um, no, you don't have to You don't have to install CDS globally. You can actually install, install it with, uh, that's, that's very, very, uh, very valid. Um, you can install it locally. Um, although, um, do you have any other uh, other NPM modules that you've installed globally? And also, it depends what you mean. Depends what one means by globally. Last week, I made a uh, a note of uh, NVM, the N NPM version manager, which means that even when I do something, install something globally, it's still local to my user ID. And Luca, thanks for following. Amazing, um, wonderful. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, th that's great input though. Um, keep it coming. Um, so yeah, so I'm not installing anything in any path that any other user on this machine could access when I install it globally. It's still within my uh, within my home directory, as it were, in the .nvm uh, directory. Anyway, uh, we've got SAP CDS installed here, and we've also got Express, which is a uh, well, the de facto uh, web uh, server, HTTP server framework within node. Um, so we've got that. We've also got some node modules that have been installed. Um, specifically, the in ones interesting to us are the ones in SAP. And if we have a look in there, of course, we see CDS and all the all our um, friends that we already recognize, Compiler, HANA, QL, Reflect Services, and SQLite, and the generated CDS and ODATA v4. We recognize those, hopefully, from last week. Um, in fact, if I just um, have a look at the, uh, the hidden files as well. Oh, I Sorry, Srikanth, I'm going to turn on that, um, what's it called? Keycaster. There we go. Uh, it's down there. Okay. So we can see the uh, the shortcuts I'm using in my um, uh, uh, Ranger. Okay. So we've got also a dot bin directory, uh, which is here. And um, where are we? There, oh, dot bin. And we can see these uh, commands here, these sort of binary commands that we have at our disposal and that CDS wraps. Um, so there's that CDS gen from the generator CDS um, uh, NPM package. Interestingly enough, there's also this uh, MIME package and a UUID package. Um, if, in fact, if we come out of here and say node modules dot bin UUID, 
that generates UUIDs, amazing. And that will come into play later on in um, what we're doing. Okay, so we've done that. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna initialize this as a Git repository, purely so that we can see changes, you know, so we can more easily see um, if things have been generated, if things have been changed. Um, it's a really, a really useful way, even if, in, even if I'm not gonna track it via Git, it's nice to see what's happening, um, you know, in VS Code visually, as in, oh, this file's suddenly been created, or this file's been modified, and so on. Um, we got something, okay, git, git add, let's go up to the top here, git add everything. In fact, I think, um, yeah, there we go. Um, so what we'll just say now is git uh, commit, initial commit, there's a message. Okay, fine, so we've got everything. Um, I've got this really nice sort of um, uh, prompt extension here, which shows me if I'm on a Git repo, the state of that Git repo, you can see there, there was, for example, six, um, six items, six new files there, sort of um, uncommitted, et cetera, et cetera. We're on a local, local only branch, as in it's not tracking a remote branch and so on. Uh, if you're interested in uh, finding out more about that, let me know. Um, but what we're gonna do is we'll, in fact, um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll open up code uh, in this directory. There we go. And um, what we can see here is, ooh, yeah, there we go, that's, that's from pre uh, just previously, let's close that as well. Is that big enough there? Let me just make that a little bit bigger. Yeah, okay, so this is the directory um, or the set of files that have been generated. There's that readme, and we're, uh, kind of, we can, of course, sort of you know look at that in preview mode, a slightly nicer version, um, but that's fine. Uh, there's our package. Uh, and so on. So, so far, so good. We've got some really interesting VS Code specific um, uh, items in here. One, which is uh, uh, referring to this launch.json, which we'll hopefully come on to uh, later on. And um, that's this launch.json here, where we can add an extra stanza for debug. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna stop talking now and um, start going through defining our first service. Um, it says here, and you, know, you can obviously read this uh, along later, uh, it says here, okay, we're going to create a simplistic all-in-one service definition. So we're going to create, in fact, if I put this over here for a second, um, yeah, a bit, a bit smaller, really. Um, uh, yeah, there we go. In fact, I'll use that, make that a little bit smaller. Um, so yeah, we'll create a simplistic all-in-one, uh, new file icon, and type serve cat service .cds. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and say new file. I'm going to uh, oh, command N, uh, new file serve. The nice thing about VS Code is it'll create this directory if it doesn't exist. Um, cat service CDS. Okay, so there we are. Uh, I can actually, with uh, command B, get rid of this little um, explorer for a second. And also we can see now nicely color highlighted that this is a new file. Um, there we go. Am I, I'm, I've got a feeling I'm going a little bit fast again, so I'll slow down a little bit. Um, um, so this is this uh, is .cds extension, which should be recognized from a, um, a VS Code um, extension perspective. We should get some syntax highlighting and also some um, some error checking as well. Um, okay, had a look, uh, thanks for uh, popping by. Uh, good luck in the all hands. See you next next time, El Um I'm going to add all this. I'm going to sort of um, start typing it in manually, first of all, so we can see the sorts of things that, uh, that we're doing here. So I'm going to say using, uh, already we can see a little bit of error checking here. We'll come to that in a second. Using uh, country managed from now, from SAP CDS common. Okay, so that's good. So far, so good. So what? What that means is that we're importing some definitions, some entity definitions, or some other types of definitions in CDS. You know, there are lots of different types of definitions um, from SAP CDS Common. Um, where is that? In fact, if we have a look down here, we can see in the node module <coughs> in the node modules directory. There's the at SAP uh, directory. Um, yes. Oh, oh, don't slow down. Okay. <laughs> Speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. That, yeah, it is, it is, it is uh, difficult to find the right balance. But um, I'm, I'm taking, I'm taking your, your viewers' uh, advice here. Um, so in SAP CDS, um, we can see that um, there's a number of files, including common.cds. And if we have a look at that, let's get rid of that again. 
This is almost like, you know, a bootstrap style uh, set of definitions, some common definitions um, for languages, for um, currency. Oh, thanks, uh, P. Dominic 69. That's good to know. Yep, keep this, keep this commentary up. It's really good. It helps me <clears throat> um, for countries and so on. We'll have a look at a little bit more um, uh, as to how that works. And by the way, in fact, here's a question for you. Um, if we're going at this speed, we may not get all the way to the end of this uh, tutorial. Even though it's a short tutorial, there's a, there's a ton of stuff to explore. So personally, I would prefer to go a little bit slower and dig into the different things uh, and maybe, maybe not reach the end and then carry on next time. But please tell me in the chat right here <coughs> what you think. Um, so I'm going to go and sort of dig in uh, by default uh, because that's what I feel uh, is, is useful. Thanks, Chris, for following. Um, even though you're uh, viewing already, thanks for viewing and thanks for following. Um, so, yeah, we've got this sort of bootstrap um, common.cds file that get, is provided when you install or when you initialize uh, a new project. Um, and if we have a look at... Here we've got using country, comma, manage. This is, you know, like an import statement effectively. So we found country, but there's also, in fact, I'm going to use my, um, I've got my Vim plugin, so I'm going to use my Vim keys. We've got also this managed type, okay? So in CDS, you can have entities, you can define different things, and one of the things is a, it's a type, which is almost like a reusable uh, structure. Um, and these things uh, or this type when used in a certain way is called an aspect if you look at the help documentation in fact if we go to sap.help uh, sorry help.sap.com uh, specifically dig please next time we'll be back okay great i will um this is good for you. this is great feedback um if you have a look in the help documentation um, in the uh, language reference you'll see a reference to aspects so look in there later and um, you'll see actually that, um, I'll get rid of that for a second. You'll see that what we're doing shortly is using this sort of shortcut syntax. They say they call it inheritance like syntax. It's more like a mix in style syntax where you define an entity and then you say also, you know, it's, it's, we're sort of annotating it or uh, extending it with these things as well. So we'll, co we'll come and see that in a, in a second. Uh, so these core definitions uh, like country, like language, um, and the things that you know that, that are those those are built with are in this common.cds. Okay, so anyway, well, let's go back to where we we started. Um, now we're defining a service. Okay, and we're don't forget we're in the um, serve uh, folder. Okay, by you know sort of uh, convention over configuration. So I'll I'll carry on typing it in. So we have got service. And I'm going to stick to the um, what's defined in the tutorial so you can follow along. Of course, I like to change names to see what happens. It's a really interesting thing about um, what the CDS runtime does with this service name, which we'll have a look at when we actually start running it. So we're defining a service. And inside this service, and then it does say in the, in the tutorial here um, or further down um, that actually, you know, um, normally or best practice is that you define in your services views and projections upon data models that you define elsewhere, okay? But for this very basic uh, approach, we're going to uh, just bang our entity definitions, bang our data models straight into this service. So I'm gonna type entity books. Now again, uh, convention um, is, and I've read this somewhere, or I picked this up from talking to the team inside of SAP, that their convention is, um, for entity types, use capitalized words and the plural. Okay, so entity books. So that's an entity type. Um, and as most entities as well, you know, an entity has a key. So we specify with the key keyword um, and we'll have ID, uh, just out of convention. And um, that can be, and look at the command, the sort of com command completion here, really interesting. That can, That's going to be an integer, as we can see in the, uh, tutorial here. Okay, so that's so far so good. We're going to have a title um, property and that's going to be a localized string. Now um, you can define a length on the string. We're not going to do here. We won't dig into localized this time, but of course, as you can guess from the context, you know, this is a title of a book that may be translated. Um, you know, this is this. The whole point is that you can localize uh, values in uh, in entity sets. 
uh, in properties. Okay, we've also got really interesting, but maybe the first sort of super interesting property here, author, and we're going to say association to book. Uh, sorry, authors. Now, what that is um, is a a two one a, a one to one association. So we're defining this property author as a source. So if you're if you're familiar with um, OData, for example, and OData metadata, this is almost like the equivalent of an of an a navigation property, or will turn into a navigation property, and it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So one author um, uh, points to this author here points to an author in the author's entity set. Now we've got an underline here, of course. Um, why? Because of course we haven't. You know, it doesn't know where. In fact, let's let's press F8. How nice is that? It tells us. You know, it, it, we can hover over as well but I quite like using the keyboard, so I don't want to use my mouse. Um, and it tells us exactly what's wrong. No artifact has been found with name authors. Okay, fine, we'll define authors, which is coming up next. So let's go down here, uh, entity authors. Okay, so I've defined like an empty entity um, and immediately the error sort of uh, changes. We haven't got rid of the error, but it says now the target catalog service authors of the managed association author, um, in fact, let's make that full screen for a second, does not have any keys. Okay, fine. Well, of course it hasn't because I've not typed any in yet. So let's do one now. Key, uh, ID, and have that as an integer as well. And let's close that. Now, um, there's no underlines. And in fact, if I press F8 again, um, it will jump to the next error. There isn't any more errors that aren't in error, sorry. Um, and so, of course, uh, that thing goes away. So a really, really nice sort of um, typing workflow, if that's a thing, um, which I think is really, really nice. And that's a combination of, um, you know, how VS Code is built and how the whole sort of plugin extension mechanism works and how it uses the language server protocol to speak to the language server for CDS, which is part of uh, the VS Code extension that we got uh, we installed last week. So let me carry on here. Um, I'm going to say name, uh, which is the name of the author. That's just a string. You know, just keep things simple. And then we've also got now another association. Okay, so it's called books. Now an author can write um, more than one book, and so we say association to many books. Okay, association to many books. Um, we got hover over there. What's that? Uh, the association of books has cardinality to many, but not not on condition. That's interesting that it's a blue underline. It's quite, quite interesting. Um, so let's complete the sentence here, which is you know obviously over here. And what what is this? This this basically defines um, how this one to many relationship should work. So we have to define a on books. Now this books um, word here refers to this books property name or association name here. And then we say what the actual um, binding is. So we're gonna um, associate it with uh, the target author, which is the thing that's up here. So it's the, it's the property in the target um, entity that we're referring to. And then we say, well, it's, it's the one that I am, okay, self. So that's that. Uh, we're gonna save that. Um, and then we've got one more entity to define entity orders now this is where we get this strange colon managed and that's if we look back at the common here type managed what that does effectively is um, enhance that's my word uh, enhance uh, this orders entity definition with um, the, the properties that are defined in this managed type. So we've got modified at, created at, created by, modified by. So you can imagine that, you know, various entities are going to need this sort of, it's going to be, you know, uh, we're going to find it useful to have this, these sorts of properties on various entities. So it makes sense to define this as a reusable type that we can then um, use to annotate different entities rather than have the properties sort of explicitly typed in each of the different entity definitions. So that's really nice, sort of reuse. Um, there's also other bits and pieces here, which we won't dig into now, but you know, sort of even from reading them, you can guess what they what they do. So this sort of is an annotation on this type definition, or this property definition to say, well, you know, when a record is updated, set the value of this modified at to now, which is obviously a special, uh, a special value. 
um, when this uh, when this property uh, sorry when when a when a, a record uh, that's been uh, that has one of these properties is created then insert okay when when an insert happens rather um, add a special value the user um, that's doing the insertion um, to that uh, to that property as well so really really interesting and if we have a look down here um, if we have a look there is there's the next one there there's there's the user defined so you know it's like turtles all the way down again it's you know I think it's a, it's a really nice um, way to sort of you know build some sort of basic building blocks and make them available to all CDS projects so this user is just defined as a you know a string 255 characters and so on um, yeah we've also got interesting look, look, look at line 42 here um, we've got this CUID entity that we can use to annotate uh, entities uh, and give those entities a key, which is a UUID. Now, UUID, as we can see from the comment here, is autom automatically filled in. So when you insert a record and don't supply a value for um, you know, a, the key that's defined as a UUID type thing, one would be generated. And remember, we saw the UUID um, NPM package that obviously CDS is using to generate UUIDs. Um, that being said, if we go back here, um, we're about to start typing the definition in, in here, key uh, ID, and that's a UUID. So we're sort of doing that um, sort of you know, literally here right now. We're not using that CUID thing. Okay, so we've got book. So we, you, know, you order, when you place an order, you place an order for one, you know, one particular book. Uh, so this is a, a two-one association, association to books. And then, um, then this is where the country comes in. Okay, so we were bringing in the country definition um, and also I've just noticed here, oh, there we are, using, not sing, using, bringing in the country definition, which came from here, country, type country. So country is a type and that type is defined as being an association to sap.com and .countries. What the heck is that? Well, if we have a look down here, um, we can see there's this sap.com and then within that we've got a child which is countries so that's sap.com and countries and context is a little bit like a namespace um, if you look further down in the um, uh, in the tutorial when we come to move these definitions out of uh, the service definition into into their own data model you'll see that in fact let's let's, let's go down there um, you'll see that uh, we use this namespace here. Um, and you know, namespace is what you can guess it is. It's just a way of sort of prefixing uh, the things within that file with that namespace. There's no namespace here in the service definition. Um, but so context is a little bit like namespace, but context you can use sort of within the file rather than just at the top of the file. So that means that anything within this context is actually called sap.com and dot thing here. And again, just um, oh, thank you very much, uh, Navarro for the Navar Navarro for the win. Is that how you pronounce that? Thank you for following. I really appreciate it and welcome. Um, how are we doing, by the way? Are we doing okay? Uh, give me a shout on the chat. Um, let, let me know that uh, you're still with me. That you're still following. Um, any questions? Of course, jump in. Um, so Chris is saying it's also worth pointing out that any field defined as association two automatically takes on the data type of the key field in the associated table. Yes, exactly. Thanks, Chris, that's that's really good. This, this is fantastic. Um, the whole point of, well, not the whole point, but one of the really nice things about doing this live is that we've got, um, you know, you folks on the channel who I'm learning from as well. So thank you, Chris. And thank you, Napheet, for confirming um, that, you know, so the whole point is that it's, you know, I wanna make this as interactive as possible because it makes it fun for me and it makes it fun for you um, and hopefully worthwhile uh, joining. So I'm gonna have some more coffee. Um, how are we doing for time, by the way? 8.34. Okay, my goodness, that went fast. Um, also, have a think about, um, as well as whether we want to do sort of extra, let's call them bonus bonus live streams, middle of the week sometime, with some lower level digging. Maybe, you know, maybe we would, you know, really go to town on uh, digging into how this common CDS works and everything. Um, uh Oh, thank you very much, uh, oh, Ronnie. Thanks, Ronnie. That's really good. Um, so yeah, so as well as maybe some uh, bonus uh, extra live streams, have a think as well, and let me know in the in the in the chat here whether an hour is is good. I've had some feedback that an hour is good. 
I've had some feedback that, um, you know, they would prefer longer. You know, what works for you? I know that, you know, whenever I do it, it's going to be somebody's early morning or somebody's just starting work or somebody's putting the kids to bed time. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. So maybe, thanks, Fred. Maybe we'll do a, you know, a, a bit more of a dig into common.cds. Maybe that's a hint to say, stop digging down here right now into this rabbit hole and get back up again. I'll do that, actually. Um, yeah, we'll dig into that later on because so, we want to talk about code lists and everything. So let's go back again to the, uh, where are we? To the um, catalog service, um, country and amount. To be honest, I'm not keen on that field name, that property name, because amount is more like a monetary value to me, so it's quantity. But, you know, anyway, let's keep it to amount. It doesn't really matter. It's just test data, right? So I'm going to save this, and um, that's that's pretty cool. Um, we've got now a, a service definition. There's no database. You know, we haven't created a database. We haven't, you know, created any standalone explicit data definitions or uh, uh, data, data model definitions. They're all here inside the service itself. But we can already start with this in terms of our project. Um, let's just have a quick look before we carry on. Let's just have a quick look. I'm going to bring up the integrated terminal in um, uh, in VS Code rather than switch to my other terminal here. So the integrated terminal I'll bring up with a uh, command um, uh, which is control and backtick here on Mac OS. Um, and I can also make it sort of, you know, maximum value with, uh, I've, I've actually done a, uh, my own special keyboard shortcut for that in my configuration. Um, so you can do that yourself, obviously. And if we say CDS and have a look at the, what we can do, we can do a CDS compile and compile that service to see what comes out. So CDS, CDS compile, good morning. Uh, that's Michelle, by the way. Um, you can't see her, but there we go. Uh, CDS compile. In fact, that's the default, isn't it? CDS compile. So CDS. And then I'm going to say serve and then cat service.cds. You can't see that behind my head, so I'm going to put it at the top um, and see what comes out. A whole load of stuff comes out, which I'm not even going to begin to try and go through right now. But there's different outputs. And again, if we have a look in node modules uh, bin. You can see that there's a, there's, a, there's a program here called CDSC, CDS Compiler. So if we say actually node modules uh, dot bin CDSC, I mean, you don't have to know this, but it's just interesting to know how, for me, interesting to know how it all works, how it all fits together. This, um, I think, is what the CDS command runs to actually do the compilation, to actually perform what we've just told CDS to do, which is to compile. So let's run this, and this has a ton, in fact, let's make that full screen, let's do that again. It's got a ton more outputs. So you can start to explore what different types of compiler output you can have. Um, and if you look through that, let's make that, um, let's put it on the, on the right again. If you, if you go through that, you can see that, um, that tr the options translate into, um, to, you can, you can compile to SQL to have a look what that would generate. And that sort of, that's quite interesting. That sort of um, gives us a, a more comfortable feeling of, okay, well, we've got this beautifully abstract, um, comfortable, high level way of defining uh, data and relationships. Um, and we've also got a way of defining services um, that refer to, in this, case explicitly defin uh, definitions within it uh, but you can imagine of course services you know the whole point of data definitions is that there are sort of you know static data definitions and then the uh, the whole point of services or part of the point of services is that they are different um, projections on different views on those um, uh, uh, data definitions um, if you look further down in fact in the uh, in the example down here of the service definition once we've started uh, tidying it up we can see that these are projections so and um, we've annotated that particular projection by saying well you know we're going to pass through the all of the properties we're not sort of trying, to, trying to restrict the properties that are available but what we're going to do is we're going to restrict the different operations that are allowed on this books projection within the service anyway so let's go back up again or back down again so we can see here what gets generated we can, we can see um, that a number of DDL, data definition language statements, get generated um, for creating uh, the persistence layer in the back end, right? Um, and of course, you can also do this for um, HANA. 
which looks a little bit different, of course. Uh, but let's just do that again for um, SQL, because that's just a little bit simpler to read right now. Um, and wow, yes, exactly. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just all there for us to have a look at, right? Um, and we can see that we've got some create tables and we've got some create views as well. We'll dig into the create view thing a little bit later on, maybe in the deep dive, maybe, and I'm going to call it, call it the Fred deep dive now. Um, as Fred said, it might be a good, uh, uh, a good thing to dive into in a, in a bonus stream. Um, and there's a reason for creating. And in fact, you know, the, the, in my mind, at, at least at the moment, uh, the views are more related to the service definitions and the, the, the tables, of course, are more related to the data definitions. Anyway, okay, so that's just a little bit peek behind the curtain. Um, where are we? Okay, so we're, we're actually, let me just get rid of that for a second. Um, yeah, we can right now, let's go back up to, and we're, already, we're only on, uh, where are we? We're only on um, step four, define your first service. So let's do what it says here, which is CDS run. Um, you know, with literally, you know, let's, you can imagine sitting around a table. Yeah, we need this entity and we need this entity in this relationship. We're not defining any data definition. We're not defining any data models properly. We're not even creating a persistence layer. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to say um, here, CDS run. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. So first of all, what's it, what's it showing us? Can you see that behind my um, head? Yes. Um, uh, yes, you can. Okay, so we got some output from um, the CDS command. So the server is listening. By default, it listens on localhost 4004. In fact, um, let's just make this a little bit uh, bigger there. I can see it. Yeah, that's a bit better. Oh, thanks, Ronnie. That's uh, that's great. Okay, so this is this is good feedback. Um, so more feedback, uh, please. Uh, only with feedback, I can I can make things better. You know, I, I know I've got tons to improve upon. Um, you know, it's only with your input that uh, you know I can figure out what the things what those things are. You know, obviously I've got an idea, but you know what are the most important things, including mug the right way round. Um, so we've got here server listens at four thousand and four localhost. That is the express server in use. In fact, if I control C that, what we can do as well is um, oh yeah, hold on. Uh, there we go. I can say port equals one, two, three, four, and then CDS run. You know, I can set an env environmental variable. I can do export port equals one, two, three, four to export it. So it's saved for the whole session, but I'm just gonna do it for this particular command. And then I can influence that port so I can make it listen on one, two, three, four, for example. Um, but just, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to actually um, run it on uh, the standard port or let it use the standard port, which is 4004. Now. We've got some, I've got some amazing, um, exciting news for next stream, the next Friday regular stream. I've got a couple of superstar guests coming. If I can figure out, I think I've almost figured out how to bring in a video, an audio stream from from a remote Skype or Slack session, and have that audio captured and streamed out through here. You won't believe how it's doing my head in trying to figure out all that. Um, uh, I've got. Um, Daniel Hutzel and Christian Georgi, who are two core team members of the uh, application programming model team uh, in the mothership in Valdorf and beyond as well. Um, and I was, I, what are one, of the, one of the questions we should put to them is, where does 4004 come from? Um, you know, why did they pick 4004? I've got my own idea, maybe it's romantic, but 4004 was the first commercial microprocessor from Intel in 1970 something, 72, 76 or something, I can't remember. It was a four bit processor, it was a very famous processor. Um, and it was sort of in, this, in the days when I first started looking at uh, computing when I was a kid, you know, uh, well, how old are I? anyway, yeah, I was like, you know, nine years old, eight years old. Um, so is 4004, did they pick that because of the Intel microprocessor or is it just random? I don't know, we'll ask them, shall we? Um, anyway, so we're listening to 4004 um, and serving catalog service at slash catalog. In fact, if I control C this here and go up and change that, uh, if I say banana, if I can spell it and run that again, serving banana at banana. So what it does is it will take the service name and use that as the sort of the root path of everything. And if there's a word service in there as well, it looks like it strips it off as well. Um, in fact, I'm gonna change it back again. 
because let's have it, there we go. CDS run, okay, we're now just about to try it. Service definitions loaded from, okay, so where is the CDS run looking to get the service definitions to, to what to serve out of the box, providing CRUD plus Q, you know, for, for free. It's getting it from our file, cat service.cds, but it's also getting it from node modules, uh, SAP CDS, com .cds. In fact, if you command click on that, you can actually go straight to there. You know, that's, that's a nice VS code thing from the integrated terminal. Um, so why is it getting it from that as well? Because we've told it to grab stuff from common, right? So that's that's where that comes from. So now I can just, you know, um, command click on that. It's going to open. Oh, it opens it there. Perfect. Welcome to cds.services. So, um, I, to be honest, am I allowed to say this? I'm not, I'm not keen on their choice of font here. I don't know why. And it's a specific font they've chosen. I don't know why. But um, anyway, yeah, that's just me. Um, the really cool thing is that, you know, we're getting this. It's just, it just works, right? So we've got now slash catalog, which is, you know, uh, that's the, the, the path it's chosen to serve for us. Um, and we've got the, the, the so there's the, um, uh, the service document. Um, and by the way, this is OData version four, as we sort of could, could guess from the OData v4 NPM module that was installed. Um, with, with the Java flavor of um, uh, application programming model, uh, you can also run the OData v2, uh, run OData v2 services. Um, oh, now Mexico, Mexico man, that's a good question. And also, by the way, Mexico man, I just realized who you were from the comments, so from the feedback, thanks, thanks Gary. Um, is there only ever one cat service file on the host? No, you can have many. And actually, uh, not only can you have many, you can also have multiple services defined in a single file. Maybe that's what, maybe we'll try that as well. Great question, by the way. Um, so here's the service document, okay, which we can sort of recognize and uh, make that a little bit bigger. Um, by the way, I, I recently realized that you can change that. Well, of course, you can change the fonts in Chrome for all the different things. And for, for monospace fonts, I've just changed it away from the default, which was Korean new or something. Much nicer to look at. Anyway, we've got the authors, we've got the books, we've got the orders. And we're also, we've got implied or implicitly because we are, we're actually using the country's um, entity set, let's call it, the country ent entity type definition, we've got this SAP common countries. And notice how, um, if we have a look at the um, country's definition here, where is it? Uh, there we go, SAP common countries. It of course, well not of course, but it's translating the dots into underscore. So SAP common countries, that's where it comes from. Anyway, okay, so let's go back. Of course, I feel most at home when, um, yes, exactly. So the local CDS command line tools, um, uh, right now it, we're doing we're, we're doing Node.js, exactly right, yes. Um, I'm much more of a, a JavaScript person as uh, various people, including, I guess, uh, Fred and Chris here will attest to. Um, and uh, so I, I, you know, I, like, I like JavaScript um, because it's just so crazy. Uh, so anyway, we, we've got the metadata document as well. Um, and uh, yes, it, yeah, I mean, OData v4 support uh, or full support is coming. Um, so yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, there's always a balance to be had between you know, being on the bleeding edge and, and so on. Uh, but everything we're doing here, yeah, I'd rather use Node as well. Everything we're doing here um, applies to uh, the Java flavor of uh, the application program model as well. You know, all the, all the CDS definitions, everything in that respect applies to you know both flavors this is cds it's not java specific cds or uh node.js specific cds so anyway we've got now i've just clicked i just just clicked on the dollar metadata and i guess most people here um will be familiar and feel comfortable and at home um yeah this is this is javascript so let's do th something silly exactly coming from you chris that's not a surprise no just kidding um and we can see here our uh, you know, familiar entity definitions um, in uh, in XML. Okay, but now also, if we have a look at our um, different entity types, books, for example, we can we can see that there's nothing there. There's no data, right? There's no data. There's no not even any database. And we can also see this 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 sort of error here, all this this message saying, you know, there is there's no database connection. Um, so so far so good. Now, just going back to uh, Mexico Man's question, let's just for the heck of it. Um, add, let's go back to cat service and add another service, service 
sorry, service. Oh, what am I doing? I need to be inside there, don't I? Service. What am I doing? Service um, Mexico. Um, let's, let's have that. And let's have a an entity. Things key ID integer. Uh, things got a name. That'll do. Right, that'll do. Okay, so we define this new service here. Let's see what happens. Let's control C that. Um, I'm getting I'm having problems with this terminal actually. Anyway, let's and let's run that again. Now, amazing. Serving catalog service at slash catalog and also serving Mexico. Notice it's not, you know, um, uh, it's not hard to strip off the word service. Serving Mexico at slash Mexico. Service definitions are loaded from the same places. So let's now have a look. Let's go back here um, to localhost 4004 and refresh that. And there we have um, a second service. How nice is that? And of course, that makes a lot of sense because, you know, the whole point, not, again, I keep saying the whole point, it's not really the whole point, but um, as far as my experience, uh, you know, uh, tells me, one of the nice things about, for example, OData services is that you don't have to have a single, you know, one OData service to rule them all. You know, you can have multiple OData services serving slightly different purposes, maybe slightly different um, UIs, slightly different apps, um, based upon the same data model, for example, or based upon completely different data. So basically, you're going to want multiple services. So why not have the ability, like here, to define multiple services? And that sort of works as well. So let's have a look at the metadata of that service there. There's our thing. Okay. So, you know, pretty, pretty cool. Um, so we, you know, is lots and lots of different things to explore. So let's go on and see what else uh, we can do here. Um, we've done the CDS run, um, and we're going to add some mock data. Okay, so um, uh, let's let's do this. And, and notice again, for me, you know, I, I did dabble with Ruby on Rails a long time ago, and one of the things I liked about Ruby on Rails was this convention over configuration. So here's another example in step five of where. Um, the, the whole cap idea and approach and CDS implementation is using convention. So if we now create, let's control C that. Uh, let's get out of here. Oh, my keyboard's in the, I'm sitting funny here. It's a bit odd. Um, I'm going to get rid of this uh, this service definition because um, it's just, just to be clean. Um, if we now create in the same folder as the cat service.cds definition, a file of the same name but with a JavaScript extension, the CDS runtime will use that um, as an implementation of that service. So we can say control N uh, cat service.js. Okay, and let's start typing. In fact, I'll, rather than type it in, we haven't got much time, um, I'll just copy that and paste it in. There we go. So uh, we can see here, this is a standard sort of, you know, JavaScript uh, module style exports mechanism. So, you know, nothing new here, even though, you know, as I mentioned, I think in the first episode, episode zero, uh, there's, some, there's some, you know, slightly odd looking uh, JavaScript here, but you know, odd is good. And you know, hopefully if you look at the video on demand from the first episode, episode zero, you'll see some of these different things here. So we can see, for example, we should be able to recognize that, oh, here's a function definition of a function, a lambda that takes no arguments, but produces straight off the bat, straight out a single expression produces or returns um, an array. Okay, so there's a literal array, uh, an array of, of course, of maps. I'm using maps in the proper sense, let's call them. That's a fighting talk, I know. Uh, I'm sure Fred might have something to, uh, to comment on that, but I'm using, you know, using the word maps as in, uh, you know, what other people call objects in JavaScript. Objects in JavaScript for me are um, the same as maps, but have explicit and deliberate methods um, that have been defined on them as well, rather than just more like a record structure. That's a map to me. Um, there's no need to be scared of services. Oh, too many services. Oh, yeah, ex oh yes, exactly. Um, so anyway, we've got this implementation here. Um, and while we're here, why don't we add 
um, a console.log. So now this is, a, this is a single expression. Um, so we'll actually, we'll actually make it into a, a, you know, a slightly longer function definition with a block here. We'll say console.log. We're not gonna get round to the debugging this time. So we'll have, a, we'll have the next session on debugging when we get to the other half of the, um, of the, half of the tutorial. So console.log, hello, I am in read books. That'll do, okay. And now of course we've got to return and then get rid of that. And where were we there? Yeah, there we go. So there's the end of that, there's the end of that. Um, is that right? Uh, oh, sorry. There we go, right. Okay, so now we've got this implementation, odd JavaScript, that's normal. Yes, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to comment on Odd and you, Chris, um, because I love you very much, and um, you are odd, like me. Um, but that's nice. Um, anyway, oh, random as well. Um, so we've got this uh, cat service JavaScript implementation, and as you can see here, you know, you can sort of read this like English. Um, when uh, an operation for uh, the reading of the books entity comes in, return this which is you know, four books, four records. And when something comes in for authors on a, on a read operation, return these three authors. So let's do that now. Let's go back in here and run this whole catalog services thing again. Um, and let's see what happens. Now also we get an extra thing here, serving catalog service at slash catalog. The implementation is from this file here. So let's run that now. Let's, oh, let's, let's go here, uh, localhost, let's go back. Let's refresh. Now we're back to that single service. Uh, the metadata is just the same, okay? Um, but if we now go to books, ooh, ooh, we get an error. What happened there? Stock property. Oh, stock, I didn't put stock. Ah, yes, of course, did I, did I miss one out? Um, stock, integer, where are we? Cat service, author, yeah, there we go, stock. Let's save that. Let's try that again. There we go. Woo! That was, I didn't, I didn't do that on purpose. That was a bit scary and exciting at the same time. Um, but that, yeah, there we go. That's, that just goes to show that actually the, the crazy output that you get if, if something happens actually tells you what's wrong, yeah? Um, so there is an actual entity set with data, Wuthering Heights and the Raven and Eleanor, very, very erudite uh, data set, I, I must say. So well done to whoever created that data set. Um, uh, so we've got that there. Oh, we've only got three minutes left. Uh, so there we go. So the implementation is there. And also we can see, hello, I am in read books. So we can see we've hit that. Um, next time we'll dig in a little bit more and we'll, uh, rather than just do, you know, the, the sort of classic brain dead quote unquote debugging, which I do of course as well, a lot, which is stick console.log statements everywhere to see what's going on. There's a really, really um, interesting and powerful uh, debugging facility built into VS Code. And if we look back at the, um, what was delivered in the, uh, the scaffolded um, uh, project when we did CDS in it, we get this launch.json, which is a way of running stuff, right? But also we can add a configuration. If we look at this, um, uh, where is it? Uh, debug, start debugging, open configurations, add configuration, open configurations, which opens this launch thing. So it's like a launch control thing. And you can add a debugging configuration, which I'll share with you next time. So you can actually put breakpoints in your JavaScript, in your implementation, or even in your um, operation extensions, if we look at the business service stuff here, um, further down here, we've got this really cool um, uh, custom logic. Of course, that's what we want to debug to see what's going on there. So next time we'll have a look at that. Um, 8.59, my goodness me, the time went really quickly. I've got, I want to thank everybody for uh, joining. The fact that you come and join the live stream is such a delight to me and I really, really appreciate you doing that. Uh, and also all the comments and the questions and everything and the passion. Don't forget, go to the uh, blog post that I put in the chat. Um, give me some feedback. Tell me what I'm doing uh, wrong and what I should do less of and what I should do more of. Um, but that just goes for me to say thank you very much for tuning in. Um, maybe I'll do a bonus live stream next week. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching. And until next time. <laughs>